Hi guys, this is Pet and welcome to another Skate for Tarkov video. Today I am starting my full playthrough series and this is designed for YouTube. During this series, it's going to be a lot different to uh, all the other YouTube videos you've seen from me. There's not going to be any cuts. It's going to be a raid is going to be an episode. I'm going to call them raids instead of episodes. There's no alert. I'm not talking to chat. I'm talking to YouTube. I'm going to be talking about all my play style, why I'm doing certain things, why I'm looting certain things. If I find something unique or interesting, I'll have a little image pop up in the corner that's relevant to it. Say if I find a key, that's a, a, a quest key, I'll have little, a quest little icon pop up with uh, a little mini map to show where the key goes to and which quest it's for. And I want to try and t teach it or treat it as like an informative playthrough series designed purely for YouTube. Uh, I will end up uploading these to VODs on Twitch as well. If you guys don't like YouTube, you can go over to Twitch. But pretty much from the, from the point onwards from here, it's going to be all uncut footage and just edited to your viewing pleasure. Lastly, before we go any further, I'm filming this all at 1440p at the highest I can push my computer to try and give you guys the best viewing experience. I know sometimes uh, the footage can get quite distorted, particularly on painkillers. Now, if you are new to Tarkov, I do have a new player's playlist. You can go check that out uh, and that will help you learn the game faster. But if you actually want to know how I go to level 40, this is pretty much the whole playthrough. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So this is the first screen you're going to get. Um, I'm, I speak English, so I'm going to go through English. Now, your name could be whatever you want. This one is going to be a secret. I'm going to cover it up now so you guys don't see it. And then once you've selected your name, you've got to pick bear or you. So for me, I, I'm going to go bear this time. It's going to be a purely solo playthrough. I'm not going to be uh, you know, trying to talk to other people and do funny stuff. It's just going to be bear. And I think bear have better clothing, in my opinion. So I'm going to go bear for this one. Uh, besides that, the voice lines are really the only difference at the moment. There's a couple of starting items that uh, do, like, you can you get, but it's not anything to really go crazy about. Now, you can get Christmas bonuses and that if you've had the game for a longer period of time. I'm not going to use any of that. And this one is going to be purely th through a standard playthrough. Now, what I'm going to do real quickly is uh, just to remove all my friends, uh, just so people don't know who I am, because I don't want anyone to be interfering with that. And uh, then I'll go over some other stuff. Okay, now that's done, uh, you can tick this little uh, number here and you can go through with that. Now with this, uh, a lot of people want to just know the settings, so I'm just going to do that now. Uh, just have the woods back here, that doesn't make any difference. This one you want to have on at the moment, um, it's really good. I go 575 and take head bob bobbing off. Graphic settings, this is what I run at. Uh, I think the game looks really nice like this and I, this is what I do. Any questions about that, feel free to put them in comments, but... For me, this is what the gun, game runs the best at. I play water, window borderless because of all my streaming. And that's pretty much it. The only control that I change is actually the drop button, which I've changed to the U key. I think it's down the bottom. There it is, the discard. Uh, usually it's default at delete key. I've changed that to the U key. Makes it nice and quick to be able to drop something. And uh, better yet, if you're in the stash and you want to delete something, I can press uh, U and then all I have to do is Y and they're right next to each other and I can delete something. Now this is actually a new addition. These used to, you have to examine them all. That's really good that you don't have to. I'm hoping maybe the traders are the same. Probably not. No, traders are still uh, the same way. Now, you could go to the effort of uh, trying to examine everything and go through each individual item. Personally, what I only do is pretty much the guns and the magazines. They're the ones that are the main ones because if you, if you loot, go to loot a gun, oh, and, and uh, all your uh, equipables, so your backpacks, arms, and um, you can, uh, as I go through the menus, I'll, I'll d definitely do that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do after after getting in here is I'm going to accept the quest. Now, debut is the first one. Kill five scabs on customs. Uh, hand over two MP133 shotguns. Now, if this was day one of the wipe, I wouldn't be able to get any of these items from the flea market uh, straight away because I'd be starting the game with everyone else. Luckily, at the moment, you can use the flea market. And with the Salewas and the 133 shotguns, this does make things a lot easier. However, the flea market isn't unlocked until level five. So you can focus on getting some of your quests done um, that don't like that are not as specific as in need the shotguns. Get to level five and then that way you're laughing. Um, previous patches, you could use the flea market straight away, but at the moment you can't. Now, as we go through each of these, I'm just gonna quickly do all the, um, I'm gonna actually put some sound on. We need, I just want a little bit of menu music. There we go. It's pretty loud actually. Um, now, as I go through all these, like I said, I'm mostly just looking for the uh, the magazines. Get the magazines done because if you loot a gun that has a magazine not identified, you won't be able to reload it. 
Um, so you can loot the rig and the gun, and then you go to uh, actually use the gun, and you can't because the magazine hasn't been examined. Now, coming over to the uh, armors, these are something you definitely want to examine before you go into your first raid. Get all them clicked on, and you laugh. And now, with a uh, standard account, you don't start with too much gear, and particularly, you don't start with any armor. So, yeah, your biggest struggle early on is trying to get armor. And uh, when I play through this playthrough, I'm actually going to try and do it in as few raids as possible. I'm not going to be rushing through doing quick raids. It's going to be just getting uh, the raids done very slowly and methodically and trying to use that full time in raid. Um, these two armors are your starting points. They'll stop most shotguns and pistols. Um, this helmet is one of my favorite helmets to use. Uh, and that is probably what we're going to use on our first, first loadout. Now, we don't really have much to... Uh, to use outside of that we do have this ak um out of all this currently the items aren't the greatest uh to be starting off this tashonka has no purpose whatsoever besides getting some of your energy back um so we might just hold on to that just for now i don't think it's going to be a big issue there's plenty of places you can find energy in raid the makarovs are pretty much useless they, they don't really pen anything they have changed some of the ammos that are, makes it a little bit more useful the grass is a lot more uh I prefer using the Grouch a lot more. Uh, the PSG GZH ammo is actually really good ammo as well. So that's a, a good choice. When it comes to everything else here, uh, once you've accepted your quest, these are the only two quests you're going to get from the start. Skiers first quest is at level 5. Um, it's to do with 3M armors and Toz shotguns. You can actually buy the Toz shotguns from Skier, but you need to find the 3M armors or get them from the flea market. Peacekeepers uh, quests don't start until you get to... Uh, about seven quests in on ski it's called friend from the west part one get friend from the west part one and two done and then you can unlock the peacekeeper uh quest mechanics start at level 10 and it requires you to make a, a, a shotgun it's pretty straightforward um but once you make that shotgun it actually opens up a lot of quests including the jaeger series so you want to get that quest done at level 10 and we will do that when it comes to ragman his start at level 15 and these give a shitload of xp so if you're actually looking at getting up to high levels quickly, this is what you want to do. Now, lastly, we're going to go check out the hideout. Now, hopefully it's not too deafening for us at the moment. I'll turn the audio down. It's all right at the moment. So um, the hideout is very bare and basic at the start. Um, you can construct all these things and it will help generate health and all that kind of stuff. It's worth doing all this stuff. It does cost a little bit of money. Uh, we will go through and do them all. But as we get uh, these upgraded, it's going to make a big difference later on because of some of the stuff you can construct. So, level 1's right there. Now, none of the level 2's will really be able to happen straight away. So, it's just going to be for now, we'll just get level 1. One of the big upgrades we want to get as well is... Oh, that's loud. It's going to be uh, getting... Uh, what do you call it? We, might be able to, we actually might be able to get this one up to level 2. Let's have a look. I would endurance level two. That's one. Okay, endurance is leveled by walking or running under weight. So that one should go, come along pretty quick. We need a car battery and a motor for that one. Now, fuel generated. Fuel's pretty easy to come by and it's pretty cheap on the flea market as well. I think we'll just be able to blow in all our money, which is going to be quite, quite a rough start. I probably wouldn't do it like this normally. Uh, we're going to try and make some good money straight away. And I think our first raid, we're not actually really going to focus on getting quests done. We're going to focus on making some money. So how much do I blow? All right, we've got 40k left. So, all right. So for our first raid, which will be on our, our next raid episode, uh, it's going to be into a map. We're going to get some money and hopefully survive into uh, getting further into this game. It's a scary game. It's a hard game. Um, the one thing I would buy before I go into a raid is definitely buying some painkillers. Um, they're not too expensive. Just buy like five of them to start off. Um, you get four uses out each, and they only last a couple of minutes, but it's enough to get you out of the uh, out of the raid if you need to. Most maps you can run, you get three minutes usage. Most maps you can run nearly through the entire map uh, in about five five or six minutes if you just ran straight for the extract. So that's kind of the starting loadout I'll be going with. I'll be taking a bandage. I'm going to be going nice and slow. We're not going to try and do anything crazy on the first raid. We're going to try to make some money, and then hopefully if we get through it. It's going to be a really good experience because then we'll actually be able to move on with these quests. So hopefully you enjoyed the first introductory episode of the playthrough for Tarkov. This is going to be all posted out throughout this week. I'm going to film all the episodes in one day for the next week. 
and then they'll go out each day. I'm gonna try and push each raid out to as long as possible so you guys get as much information from each raid as possible, as well as um, it's it's not gonna be rushing through trying to get everything done as quickly as possible, but actually trying to explore the maps, level up skills, get all these cool items that we wanna get for quests, and then teach you guys whilst leveling up to 40 and as few raids as possible, really, if this goes to plan. So for our first raid, we're going to go through customs. Now, I made sure I insured all my items. I wasn't going to go customs. I was actually thinking about going interchange, but I've decided against it. I want to go interchange. I want to go custom. Mostly because I want to get those five scav kills. If I can get those five scav kills, then it won't be as big of a problem. Because what we can do is we get the five scav kills, and then we just, uh, it doesn't matter what map we go to, we're just going to get those 133 shotguns. Um... Whilst I'm in customs, I'm actually going to be focused on getting to filing cabinets. Now, um, I don't really know how busy the server's going to be this time of the day. It is a weekend, so um, it's probably going to be pretty busy, but it might be not full at the moment. So it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, maybe, maybe. I think we're still going to be some sweaty guys running around. Now, so whilst we're waiting for matching, the purpose early on is you want to try and get some keys early, particularly the customs key and also like any of the uh, dorms keys that are going to be used for quests. So those ones are your uh, 203 and 303, your 220 key, they're all for the, the uh, three-story dorms, the 206 for the, uh, for the two-story dorms, and the 114 key, which has a specific spawn in the jacket as well. So, all right, we're into the raid. That was nice and quick. Slot late spawn. Now, we are actually already like, halfway through the map. This is actually probably the closest to the dorms you can get. So we're actually going to move pretty quickly over to the dorms and then just hold it down uh, for a little bit. There is a heap of filing cabinets in the two-story dorms and we are 40 seconds late. So it's potential that people have already spawned over on the custom side. Sorry, the the uh, boiler side. And we're going to be having them run into us. So that's why I want to kind of move nice and quick here just to get out of any of the threat areas. Now, as I move through here, there is a tent over here. There's a duffel bag next to the tent. And between the duffel bag and the log right here, there is a flash drive spawn. I'm going to quickly search this. It's a little bit risky. I, I really don't want to be out in the open right now. And we've now just found ourselves a morphine. I think that's a fuel conditioner. Oh, my God. So, okay. So, we've already got two quest items that we need for later. Fuel conditions can be quite uh, rare on other maps. Um, or maps like... Uh, maps like... Customs and that, you don't find fuel conditions very often. For maps like... Uh, labs has a specific couple of spots for fuel conditioners where you'll get them really quickly. Now, you need four fuel conditions for a quest. So that's something you want to uh, definitely hold on to. Now, we're just going to get in here and we're going to go quiet for a little bit. We don't want to be uh, making too much of a racket. Now, if someone's actually been playing this game a while, um, there is... People know when doors have been opened. Like some, As you can tell, these doors are closed. They start closed, and they always start closed, they don't change. So if you can notice certain things happening, that will uh, make a bit of a, a difference when it comes to knowing if people have been in that area. Now we want to keep searching through all this stuff as quickly as possible. Um, if we can find ourselves a nice little cheeky gun of some sort, that'd be nice. But uh, see, as a magazine, we want to examine those magazines. Now at the moment, we're going to loot nearly everything we can, mostly because it gives charisma Search, get, we get uh, search experience, all that good stuff. Now, this is the 206 dorm uh, key that we'll talk about there. That one goes in right there. And that is one that we want for later. Now, there's two filing cabinets in here. And I always suggest searching these filing cabinets uh, when you're getting that chance early on. Um, so, these tapes, blue tapes are used a lot in the hideout. Pretty much everything's got a value now. Um, now, as I hot, you saw me hotkey these things here. You can hotkey meds by just highlighting the med and then pressing the number you want to press. You don't actually have to uh, drag it down to the, the toolbar like most people thought. Now, zeros don't really have a purpose at the moment. I don't even think... Lamps are good for a, a backpack trade later on, but it's not really something that's overly relevant right now. Uh, the crickets are pretty much pointless as well. I've already searched that one. Haven't I? Yep. Now, we'll go through each of these drawers. Once we get to the end of all the drawers, um, there is another set of following cabinets we can do. There's, I think, about eight following cabinets throughout all of 
all of customs. A wreck bat is used for a quest as well, and uh, maybe in the hideout. I can't remember all the hideout items re required, but um, definitely worth holding onto it. Now, the issue with customs early on is generally that you don't have enough uh, opportunity to find meds. There's a couple of med spawns, but overall, it's not too crazy. Um, it's definitely worth walking through that wire to get to that filing cabinet, by the way. It's just one filing cabinet, but it, it does add up. Uh, Euros are worth about 114 rubles a euro, so... Oh, we just heard someone. Alright, so there's the 220 key. That's the key we're going to need for a quest, and we just heard someone creeping around d down underneath, so... Hopefully, this is... We're going to be in a bit of trouble here, I think. 203 key is also for a quest. We're going to we're gonna grab it. I think that's either a player or a scab boss. Scabs don't normally patrol through here. So make sure we're on full auto. I've got a feeling it's a scab that's patrolled in. Now, we're not in a rush. We'll just take our time. We're just going to listen for a little bit. The way we're going to know if that's a player is if they do something like... I don't know. Like, reload. Just randomly reload or make certain noises. It's sounding more like a scav. It's turning on, on the spot. A player would have kept pushing... Okay, so it could be a player. Now, you, that crackle noise? That's nah, definitely a scab. Oh, scab boss. We're in trouble now. We're definitely in trouble. We want to be out of this room. Somewhere we can shut a door. I think... be really good for us or really bad if we weren't stuck in this room we'd be fine right now because we could actually just bait the scab boss down and shoot him right now because he's they're all up here he's gonna get pretty sketch i think now they've got meds they've got good armor they've got good guns They've got items what we want. So we need to play this smart. Right now they're just hanging out on the top floor, which is not ideal for us. Uh, we we don't really want to be fighting them from a barbed wire. We're going to get absolutely destroyed in that barbed wire. So the options here really are we either try and bait them. Might be able to get an angle on them. They're definitely in that top floor, which is not ideal. But it, it, it would be perfectly fine if we were just across the hallway. We could use methods like this. We only do have uh, the two mags at the moment too. We didn't get to pick up another one. The tactic I would normally go for here would be to try and kill one, grab their gun, armor, and helmet, and then use it to kill the rest. They have BT ammo, which is very uh, very close to, uh, shit, very close to, uh, to the, uh, BT and BP are pretty much identical. But the issue I've got right here is I'm going to get stuck by the wire, so I can't even just open that door, like run out, open the door, run into that door. Feel like it's going to be really, really hectic. I think maybe what I could do here is potentially take a just do a shot, see if I can bait one down. But then I might end up having to fight all of these from this room. I guess we we'll just have to. 
Give it a go, I guess. Uh, good news. Now, you can stop heals early. Once they've got to the full health, you can stop the heal early. So... Now, I don't have a lot of health. So, I need to... A lot of meds. I just got to go back and clear through. Does any of them come out to the top? That would be a lot easier to kill. Now, if they're sitting at the bottom of this staircase, it's just a bit of a rough spot. Right, so we just got the scav boss, which is a good first kill. Now we need to get the other ones. He comes with uh, four minions. And we need to keep topping up this ammo so we can actually kill them. Scav bosses have an extra bit of health. But they also, um, they also don't have extra health on the head. So a headshot should kill me in one shot. But now they're coming up. So we're going we're gonna to pretty much bait them. We don't have the armor to take them on face to face. We need to get a bit lucky Lucky here. We need one to come up to the door. We we'll shoot him and then hopefully it all goes well. We've got plenty of time left in this raid too. We don't need to rush anywhere. Um, there's been a little bit shooting around the rest of the map, but at the moment we haven't heard anyone in dorms yet, so. Yeah, you can do something cheeky like this and get away with it. All right, so now we've got to kill the helmet. That's actually a good rig. So we're going we're gonna to throw our rig right now. We're going to chuck all this like this. Now we're going to use this gun. I'm going to keep closing this door. I was talking about being out of ID uh, guns and that. Then we've got some meds here. And what we want to do is put that rig in our backpack as well. We don't actually need, like, this helmet, for example. It's insured. We can get it back. Now, we can search this rig, and we can put all these items in this rig. And take the rig. Now, this AVS rig is actually at full health, which is really nice. I don't think this visor is really going to help us against BTMO anyway, so... Oh, that's already been hit now. Here comes the next one. Right, so we just got all our scav kills, which means we've killed four. Now, this AK is insured, but we will take the, gun, the mag off it. Uh, we're going to take the 103. There's another AVS rig. I'll actually probably rather take the AVS rig over the Triton there. It takes up the same space, but it takes it has more room, and it's an armored rig, which you also need for a quest later on. So it's, it's it's a pretty solid rig to be picking up right now. Our rubles. Okay, we, we're probably going to get a lot of morphine through the playthrough, but you do need to find morphine found in raid. Taking an extra helmet's not a bad idea at this point as well. Um, Quickly reload this mag. There's a Karasa armor, a helmet. Sorry, there's a Blackrock chest rig, which uh, it's a it's a big rig now, uh, and it needs you need to find these found in raid. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and take these mags and stuff because they've got good ammo. 
early on, ammo is like pretty hard to get good ammo with your trader levels. And uh, anything you can grab early, it's going to be really helpful later on. At this point, we can actually get rid of some of this other stuff. Um, mostly because of the value of what we can loot here. Now, uh, this one, AK-103 has a sight, so we're going to take the sight. That. We're going to take this helmet off, put this one on, because that's got full health. We'll take the raid benches there. And you can do stuff like this to get extra backpacks. One, two, and... We've got an AK-74M here. I probably would rather the AK-74M over the, uh... The N? Oh, I don't know. It's... They're about the same. Mostly I like probably the nipple sight a little bit more. Any items here we could probably part ways with. Um, probably just drink that water for now. An interesting one because this one's got some extra stuff on it as well. Get that muzzle off. We're going to go here. Do a bit of in-rage uh, modding. That one on there. Put this stuff over here for now. Throw that one. Take that. I'm going to switch back to this one. Push that body again, and we're going to put all this extra stuff back on this one. Not really a very important item, that one, but... Alright, so... We have plenty of ammo, but one more to go. We have to kill five. No, we killed five. We killed five. All right, I guess we killed five. And now we've got the scav boss. Now he's got a uh, he's got the five five six variant gun, uh, and he sometimes has a golden pistol. If he has a golden pistol, you definitely want to loot it. Um, what we can get here also is hopefully we will get a lab access card. So there's a lab access card. We want to take that one. And maybe a Bitcoin. Oh, we've got a Bitcoin too. So we've been we've been blessed by the Tark of Gods right now. Um, I'm sure anyone watching this would be like, this is not a typical first raid. It's not. It's really not. Um, user experience may vary. All right, we have gotten everything possibly that's godlike from this raid right now. So we're going to top up our health and we're going to get the hell out of this raid. Um, and there's not really a lot more we can gain from it. If we, if we spend much more time in here... We're really just going to be looking at PvP fights. Um, people are going to be slowly moving towards the dorms right now anyway, so it's not something we want to get involved in. We've got a good armor. We've got a good helmet. Plenty of money made. Uh, we've got a 220 key. We've got the 203 keys. We've got two quest keys. You know, good ammunition. It's going to top up this health, and we're going to try and make our way towards the extract. Now, from the boiler side... Born, which is that side that we started on the construction so the custom side has four extracts one by the water it has a campfire if it's available one on the other side which is the ruaf one uh there's a big white bright white light that's on when you can use that one and the other two uh back in the corner the exact names are what is it crossroads and trailer park so those ones are i'm just trying to be focused here those ones are Always available, but you need to be wary that the, uh, you need to be wary that you've got to go through the whole uh, custom side of things. Now, people are generally very slow coming out of customs because of the big red warehouse. Um, there's heath ones in there. There's some, uh, some good loot, computers, all that stuff. So people take uh, a long time to get out of the custom side and there's a lot of PVP action that goes down there. Oh, we can use this one now. Done. We're, we're actually going to take this extract. This one wasn't available from uh, the boiler side. This one used to only be available from the custom side. So this is actually really good. Well, this is going to be a lot shorter raid than I was actually thinking it would be. But at the moment, we can't really spend more time in here. This is just too good a loot to actually 
uh, to get and to just not extract. We'd be like flirting with danger. We've already got our five scav kills. We've downed scav boss. Uh, I think what's it been about 19 minutes in here. So it's a bit shorter period of time. Uh, I'll do a quick wrap up once we do get out. You don't need to be right up against the car to uh, at the start. But you can leave for, you know, 10, 20 seconds and come back. But it's a minute you got to wait, so. Um, you can extract here with your mates. I've never done it. I've only ever done this, these extracts solo. And you need to pay for them. Um, so the, there's a couple of car extracts. Uh, Interchange has one. Woods has one. They're not always there, but when they are there, they're actually a really handy extract to get. So it's nice to have that one. And we got out of this raid. So that was a very successful raid. Luckily, we spawned really close to dorms. We got into the actual uh, two-story dorms. Didn't expect it, but the scav boss was there. We fought the scav boss. We are... If you're ever fighting a scav boss and you're undergeared, you want to be make sure you stay uh, behind cover and let them come to you. If you are wearing Gen 4 armor and really good gear, you can push them and just charge straight through them because they've got BT ammunition. With that packer, it would have only taken three bullets and I would have been dead. And they shoot forward. They don't miss. So we're lucky he hit my arm. <laughs> But if he hit my chest then, I probably would have died. So it was, it was a bit of a sketchy situation. Once we got that AVS rig on, we were actually sitting in a lot better location. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, the, the statistics, um, overall, it was a pretty straightforward raid. We did make a bit of money and, um, you know, everything went fairly, fairly straightforward. We got 7,000 XP. Now, scav bosses and their minions give a lot more XP. And so, uh, as you can see here, the eliminations were 2,200 with the headshot bonus 360. Uh, the streak bonus is how many you kill in a raid. It's 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 kind of like a bonus for killing more in a raid. If you kill 20, this streak bonus is actually quite high. Now, I don't think... Yeah, we didn't get to the uh, level 5, which is what I expected. Um, but that was a lot of XP for the first raid. So we got really lucky with that one. So escape bonus, healing, drinking. Uh, something we have to do pay more attention to after each raid these days is where our health is because you have to heal outside of raids. And um, after each raid, you want to... Make sure you heal, check your hydration, check your uh, energy levels. Now, personally for me, I like to go and eat and drink inside raids so I get the metabolism skills up. Uh, so we're, we're nearly full in hydration, but our energy is down a little bit. Um, so when you get into a raid and uh, your actual metabolism will level from eating and drinking inside a raid. So the reason why my water's back up that bit more is because I, uh, sorry, my hydration's up that bit more so I actually drank in that raid. Anyway, guys, this will wrap up this raid. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode. As we got all those items, we're probably going to go into interchange, get some of those shotguns, get a heap of loot, try and do a heap of uh, pillaging through following cabinets, get some quest items aside, a gas analyzer, all that good stuff. And hopefully, you guys will enjoy that one. As always, thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. All these videos will be in a single playlist for you guys to check out, and you can watch them in your own time whenever you feel like it. If you've got any taco questions, feel free to hit me up on my live stream, or if it related to these at all, chuck them down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Ooh, ah, uh, just a little bit. Ooh, ah, uh, little bit more. Ooh, ah, uh, just a little bit. You know what you're clicking for.